The purpose of this video is to go through a quick demonstration on how we can collect data using the Kistler force plate system. Prior to data collection, we obviously need to make sure we've got everything set up appropriately. So in this instance, we need to make sure the AD converter is powered up along with the laptop. The two should be, should be connected with a USB cable and the force plates that we're using should be popped into the appropriate channels. For example, if you're using one force plate as we are in this instance, then it should be placed into channel one. And then if you're using any further force plates placed into the consecutive channels. In terms of then connect, connecting to the force plate, we need to ensure that the red, the red dots are lined up on the force plate and the wire, and then carefully just place that into the force plate. Finally, it's important that we have some consideration of the orientation of the force plate, as this, this may impact the force outputs that we receive depending upon the movement that we're performing. So once we're satisfied that we're all set up, we can then go ahead and enter the software. At this point, it's recommended that initially we go into the Instacal software. And what this allows us to do is just ensure that the AD board is configured correctly. Okay, so we should have a board with a USB number down here. Um, sometimes it will pop up in a window and you just have to click OK. But in this instance, we'll highlight the board number zero and go up to this option and hit that one to configure. The number of channels should be selected on 64 single ended. And if we then hit run. Okay, so the board's now configured properly. We can click OK and exit the Instacal software. We can now head into the Bioware software where we can acquire some force data. So from here, the first port of call is to head to the properties option. So the little tool icon up here. And from here, we can configure the force plate that we're gonna use. So for example, we've got force plate one, two, and three, which within the lab are labeled up in the top corner of each force plate. Today we're going to use force plate one, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the active list. You'll notice that it pops up, prompting us that this should be starting in channel one. So as I stated earlier, it's important that we that we make sure we plug that straight into channel one on the um, AD converter. If we were going to then add a second force plate, that would start at channel nine because each channel on the AD converter contains eight individual sub channels. So we're just going to go for the single force plate today. And so I'm satisfied we've got the active device selected. From here, we then go to the play icon with the cogs beneath, where we can configure the length of time and also the sampling frequency. So today we're going to go simply for a walk. Um, so I'm going to give my participant about six seconds to complete that. I'm going to sample at a thousand hertz. So a lot of the research would be sampling between 500 and a thousand um, with a thousand the kind of go-to frequency. Prior to data collection now, we would generally weigh our participant or the other option is to weigh a known quantity. So we do have some calibration weights uh, totaling 20 kilograms in the lab and that would give us an indication of how accurate the force reading is. Today, we're going to go for a weighing of our participant. So hit weigh. It reads the voltage offsets initially, so we need to make sure the force plate is unloaded. It's currently fluctuating around the zero mark. We can change this to kilograms, newtons, etc. I'm now going to ask my participant to stand on and try and remain as stationary as possible. OK, so it does fluctuate slightly. But that's settled quite nicely. I'm, I'm satisfied that's a true representation of his body weight. So I'm going to click OK. So we're set up for six seconds of data collection. Again, at this point, it's useful to make sure the force plate is unloaded and hit start. Again, it takes a, a reading of the voltage offset. And as soon as we're ready, we can either hit enter on the key, keyboard or we can click OK. 
So I'm going to get my subject into position. Good. Okay. And while six seconds commence from now. So as soon as we've collected the data, automatically we are presented with this window, which represents the forces in a three-dimensional nature. So first of all, the blue trace corresponds to the FZ, which is our vertical force. We then have the green trace, which is our FY, our anterior posterior force. And then we have our FX in red, which represents the medial lateral forces. Um, so what we could do, if we wanted to pinpoint exact numbers, we could simply go for a view statistics option. Um, so in this instance, we're capturing the whole of the, the contact period. We have minimum and maximum forces and the time occurrences for those along the FX, FY and FZ. Uh, equally, we could condense this time frame. So if I just want to look at a portion of the movement, then the minimum max maximums might change accordingly. So that's a kind of quick, a quick method. What we would recommend is that we export this data and save it to Excel. So to do that, we need to go up and hit File, Save As. First of all, change the file type from a Bioware file to a text file. Label it up accordingly. And for ease of me locating the file, I'm just going to save it onto the desktop. Here we're presented with the option in terms of the forces that we'd like to export. So let's say, for example, you were conducting a counter movement jump. You might only be interested in the vertical force. So we could just select the FZ. With something like a, a walk or a run, change of direction, the other forces might um, be really crucial to describe that movement. So I'm going to go ahead and select all three and export data. Okay. So if I now head back to the desktop, what we're going to do is first of all, open up Excel and then head to file, open, go to the desktop, just change this from all Excel files to all files. And we should now have the option to open our text file, hit finish. And you can play around with the width of these things. But essentially what we're presented with now is we have a column of FX data, FY and FZ. So there's lots we can do from here. We could create a figure or a graph that represents all three of the forces. Or as I'm going to demonstrate, we could look at an individual figure for one of the force traces. So I've selected the FY. and I'm just going to pop that into a figure. So you'll see there's a lot of kind of dead data prior to the initial contact and following that. So the actual contact period is relatively low. So we could sieve through the data, kind of delete some of this stuff beforehand, delete some of the stuff afterwards, just to condense that and make this figure more presentable. In terms of further analysis, we could look at the duration of certain stages of the gate. We could look at the peak force occurrences within the kind of heel strike breaking phase and the propulsive phase. Uh, equally, we could look at loading rates and rate of force development, um, but that's kind of up to you and again, dependent upon your project. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope this has been useful.